Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Lawrence Plays and it's when we're having a bit of a look at some space exploration in Factorio and seeing what I've been up to since last time. So this is my ship that flies back and forth to uh, Miokin carrying uh, w water out to Miokin in order to, which I need for generating power and bringing the vulcanite and any overflow stone overflow back again. And the reason it's, it's currently on its way to Miokin and the reason it's actually still got quite a lot, in fact, a lot, a lot of uh, vulcanite in here is because I've set this up to, in order to, to uh, try and make sure that I don't run out of water. And that's something that's taken a bit of fiddling with to get to get it up and working properly. So the way I've done this, let's see if I can have a look at both, all, all the uh, the relevant places. Yeah, so here on Norvis, I've now got a, a receiver here that is receiving a signal that comes from Miokin, um, and then here we're trans translating the amount of water into W's. So as you can see here, we've got oops, that's increasing. The spaceship must have arrived. Let's have a quick look at Miokin. Yes, the spaceship has arrived. So we're draining the water out, and we're measuring the amount of water in in these tanks and transmitting that off. And that means we can now make sure that these pipes are at least basically full. The tanks the other end um, are as full as they're allowed to be because we've got this this pump here limiting the amount that gets pushed through. And so we should, should, in theory, have plenty of water available for power generation. Here we have, as I say, we have the water's being unloaded uh, merrily by this by this pump, and we're loading in the uh, the vulcanite here. And so the numbers, with the the uh, the ship will be monitored. So once it once it eventually fills back up again with vulcanite, the ship will take off. But that's that's to be expected. The hope is that we're going to be able to get enough water out of it before that before it does so, that the system will. Um, will behave itself otherwise this ship is going to do an awful lot of flying backwards and forwards without actually transporting very much stuff so that's going up yeah that's going up reasonably slowly these are going down reasonably quickly it's, it's not quite as good as I'd like it to be but it is transferring the stuff around so yes as I say here we've got this transmitting the amount of water and then at the other end on Norvis we're receiving that we're turning it into a different a different signal that's ca but carrying the same um, same number, and then piping that into the ship, and that means we can then do sort of various comparisons inside the ship. So let's go back and have another look at the, uh, at, the at the spaceship itself. The combinators tell the ship to either, to take off from Miokin like this, plip, when it's full of when it's full of vulcanite, and also but to take off from the other end either when it's completely empty of vulcanite and therefore needs to come back to um, Back, come back to Miokin to pick up some more so when it's all drained out this way or when the signal coming in from this dish that's put into the in, in through the clamp into the spaceship is above a certain amount it, it is sorry is below a certain amount because at that point that means we're very short of water on Miokin so as you see, see here we can see we've got um, if water is if W is less than 25,000 which means there's less than 25,000 water on Miokin and there's more than 260,000 water in these tanks, then it'll take, and, and of course it's on Norbus, then it'll take off and fly back to, fly back to Miokin uh, via, the, via the space station for refueling. So the, the only problem with this is that it didn't necessarily wait for long enough draining these tanks before it took off again, because this presumably filled back up again. Oh no, it didn't. Why did that take off then? Hmm. Um... This is going to take a little bit of th a little bit of checking out. So this this is the go to go to Norvis one, and that's if you get two signals out of these two, presumably. Yes, it's linked up to these two. So these two both. So if we're on on Miokin and there is more than fifty thousand, fifty thousand. Oh oh okay. So there's room for slightly more than fifty thousand in here, and we've we've just we've just hit it. So okay, that. Ex yeah, because oh, yeah, oh, there on, on the right hand side there we see storage is 512,000 and we've got to 503. So actually, I should probably set that to be slightly higher, but uh, it's it's close enough. This is basically working. The downside is it's bringing some of the water. In fact, it's bringing about a third of the water back with it. So it only managed to dump two thirds in the time it was on the other on the other planet, which isn't ideal. I would have liked that to have emptied, but it looks like we're not actually getting through the um, the vulcanite fast enough on Norvis. So hopefully, when it lands, all of this will all of the vulcanite will drain out into these um, into these chests up here, and we'll manage to fill the tanks back up with water. And then, well, we're getting we're getting 177,000 water th signal through here. So it's going to be quite a long time until that drops all the way down to 25,000, and the ship feels the need to go again. So I think this is probably okay. This is going this is going to work. Um, 
it's a bit tricky trying to balance two different materials that have that, that, need, that need to go in opposite directions but i think i'm probably doing a reasonable i think i'm doing a reasonable job of it here and now that we've got to a sort of a, a reasonably steady state i think it should be all right pay no attention to all of the fuel tanks here this is because i've messed up in various ways um, I, I managed to accidentally land my spaceship here without without going via the um without going via the refueling uh, spot on uh, in orbit and so it landed here didn't have enough fuel to take off and that was extremely frustrating uh, but yeah other than that i think this is now working well and we'll keep continue to monitor it and, and, and just hope things go well so what else have i been up to um ah oh yes i remember in a previous episode i built up this spaceship here that is bringing back the um the date the solar data cards from from um orbit around Kalidus, the, the sun around here and as you can see we've got plenty of those being fed into a station now i've since i've now expanded it there's another identical ship here parked next to it this one goes to an asteroid belt um in order to get data from there so it's doing exactly the same sort of thing uh, down here we've got these two machines making making the the, uh, the probes and now these are really really expensive in uh, memory cards because they, each one of these that we build takes a thousand blank data cards in order to make it um, and oh, a load of rocket control units were short of as well, so hopefully we'll be bringing some more of those up. Um, so, and as you can see, we've got no no um, memory cards available here. So these we've got a bit of a shortage. We've got a bit of a shortage of some of the inputs for these things. However, we've flown enough. This has flown back and forth enough times now, by, by enough times, I probably only mean once, um, that we've got all of this, that we've got at least a bit of a buffer of this. That can wait for us to bring up more more memory card substrates which get filtered out along the belt along here up around here yes this one and into here um and a lot and a lot more of the um the the rocket control units which should be going yes they're going into into a um into a chest here so we do seem to be very short of those while I'm thinking about this and and and, uh, deep, and and looking at things and debugging and stuff, let's have a quick look at this spaceship and see how it's getting on. So it is loading up with lots of the uh, the substrates. That's good. It isn't loading up with rocket control units though. That's less good. So why is that? Okay, there. There's lots of them here. They're coming along here. They're going. Along here, uh, and they're not being fed through here, so we clearly don't have a negative number. This is this is sent through when less than zero, so we apparently don't have a negative number of these in in orbit. So let's go back to let's go back to not orbit again, and go. Why do we why are we not summoning any uh, rocket control units? Well, we are. We th we think we're th summoning a thousand of them. So the question comes up now where are those thousand rocket control units and why are they not basically why are they not in this station down here where they should be so there's a train can come over and grab them because a thousand is probably enough because they don't stack very um they don't stack very densely so that sh should be plenty uh, that's probably going to be more than enough to fill it fill a train um this is going to take a bit more investigation i'm going to do this off camera over here again I've been building up. I've built up this spaceship here. This this will fly off to the to, to, to the um, to, to the asteroid fields, and over there, Kalidas asteroid belt rather. Yes, over here, I built up this tiny little depot system. So here we have the spaceship will drop in here. It will unload in exactly the same way as the other one does. It will unload its rockets and its probes into these two. This machine here will then launch all of those probes out, collect all of the, um, the data cards up here, and when the spaceship lands, it'll fill it up. That means they can then be shipped back to Nor not Norvis. They can be shipped back to Norvis orbit, as you saw earlier. They'll be put on the LTN system, and there's, so a train can come out and pick them up. And I've now got trains set up. I've, now, I've got done a bit of extra, not that one, a bit of extra building over here. And I believe, yes, here we go. I'm actually now building up the um, the, the Astro 4 data. Now it's not being made quite as quickly as I would like because we don't have enough of a couple of the uh, data card types coming through. So we've only got five out of eight of these machines running so it's not ideal but we are at least producing them it just means i need to come in here and find out where the bottlenecks are and sort that out so i'll probably i'll do that a bit later i'll do that I'll do that on one on the stream so yeah do, do come along and join me for those of course <laughs> um 
And then they're being loaded into the station as always. Uh, so this this one was well. If we have a look at the um, at the diagram, there wasn't a huge amount of stuff that needs to be done for this. Obviously, with these ones just come straight in off the off the spaceship, so they're absolutely trivial. Once you've got the rest of the system up and running with the with the uh, remote space uh, with the remote outpost to do the actual launching of them, then we've got uh, well, what have we got? So we've got these ones that are made in the uh, gravimetrics orreries. They pull in. They pull, they, they pull in, ah yes, they pull in these data cards from earlier, the ones that are made by mixing up lots and lots of different um, data cards earlier on. And we seem to be running out of those as well, so that's a problem. <laughs> Gonna need to fix that one out. Up. And also by pulling in the, uh, what do we call it, negative pressure data. So we'll, we can work on the astro and the negative pressure data and spit out the science if we need. Now this is struggling because there isn't enough um, negative pressure data coming in. So that's something I'm going to need to go in and fix because these clearly is not running fast enough as you can see. Down here we've got a similar problem because this is also using a negative pressure data, so it's no wonder I'm running a bit short of these things. And as you can see, there's a 40% um, a chance of it actually working, a 40% chance of it giving you the card back, and a 20% chance of it just completely failing and wrecking the memory card. So we've got these sort of, this is the other reason these things are a little bit harder, is because they have such a low percentage chance of success that you need to produce a lot of the previous data types. This one for, it also, oh, this, this one has a 75% chance of success, so that's not... Actually, that's worse because it's got a, wor a higher chance of producing a junk data card, whereas the other one just sometimes spat it back out and um, uh, allowing you to reuse it. So, yeah, it's, um, it's it's not ideal. But these two will, once I have enough uh, sufficient supply of the negative pressure data, they'll be they'll be fine. They'll run without any problems. <laughs> well, without too many problems. Then down here, what have we got here? We've got the micro black hole. No, yes, micro black hole data. Which, just, which brings, takes, it brings in a particle stream, so the pink clouds here. So those, I've decided the easiest way to deal with that is to bring that in by train. So I've got another drop-off station here that's getting these data cards and, and the pink clouds. I like how, And I like how the, um, the pink clouds are um, apparently less dense than... I don't know what they're less dense than because we're probably we're in a vacuum of space here, but you know they're flo it's floating at the top of the tank. <laughs> I think that's being made up in the energy, um, energy science area, up, just up here probably this is where I'm doing all of the cloudy stuff and so I had I dropped in an extra station here for that to be picked up from nice nice and easy it's just bring in it's just it's just didn't seem worth building up all of the infrastructure to, 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 to create these again down on the uh, down here it was easier just to bring them in in their already created form so that's the other three data types they're all fed in here made into catalogs as always fairly straightforward stuff those are then fed off oops, up here to the science area uh, so they're now, um, they're being dropped off, they will be dropped off here when there's enough of them. I think I've managed to squeeze a few through already. Um, yes, here, there are a few up here that I've, I made, I think I sent a train over just to grab some so I could, you know, check stuff out, make sure it was working, that sort of thing. Um, and so that means we've now got this machine here is, in theory, capable of producing um, tier 4 science, uh, astro science packs. It's not because it's run out of the tier 3 ones, and that's because the, okay, it's because the, um, data cards are gummed up um, the junk data cards are gummed up so I've seen this problem before around here and I have solved it I think you basically solve it by having not having this drop on here you have this this you have I need to have this output belt carry on so that the the ones the duff data cards are being put on the other side of that belt are allowed to go down here um, and then yeah oh yes and then splitting it off down here so that the um, so we put the the, t the, um, the junk data card straight onto here oh, so they can just go be poured straight away down there and then the tier 4 science packs on here so the basic idea is more or less there I just need to stick in an extra belt down here so we need to put in that Oop, there we go, that's unclogged it in fact, that's quite nice um, it's going to break the other one um, the, the tier 4 isn't going to be able to come out but never mind We'll put that there like that, and then that like that, and uh, copy that to there, and then put in a straight through belt there. Yeah. So now what happens is these these the ones that are being produced by going going the other the other way on this splitter in order to be passed up to the top to here will go. The the duff data cards will come back out this way, and they'll go they'll stay on the other side of the belt. So they'll bypass all of this queue and be dumped straight down straight down the chute to be disposed of. 
the tier four stuff will come down here. We'll go. We'll eventually go through here. Um, I'm glad that seems to seems to be working properly. And we'll carry on down this belt. And the duff data cars will be passed through, passed through, passed through down. It certainly gets dumped down here as well. So that that'll work. And the tier four science packs go the other way on here and drop onto this belt. So I think that should work. I just need to get myself over there and actually build it because I don't have a robot up here. I don't. Actually, I do have a spider tron. Um, I've never used it, but I'll. Uh, I, I I can't even remember where my character is. But so at some point, I'll come over and fix that up. So yes, tier four space science, astro science is now being produced, and that's meant I've been able to get through quite a lot more of the research. So there's a load of stuff down here now that I've been. Um, I've been. I've been picking off some of the. I can't really tell where any of the stuff the stuff I've been doing recently is, but I've been picking off some of the um, some of the things that require tier four, like this uh, heavy assembly, and the uh, speed modules because why not? And so I'm getting to the point now where I'm able to do some of the more advanced research, some of the more advanced uh, spaceship researches, perhaps that's that sort of thing. Just generally some of the stuff that requires tier four um, sciences in order to get it done. But there's still a lot of stuff left to, left to do, and also quite a bit of stuff up here that I don't really care about. Um, I should probably do that one. That seems like a useful thing to have. It does require 400 of them, though. So, given that I haven't got a ready supply yet, it's probably best I don't do that. Um, I would also would like to do the spaceship structural integrity seven, but that's really really expensive. So again, I'm, I'm sort of holding off on that a little bit. Um, Naquium processing, also quite important, but I think at the moment I want to get the tier 4 biological so I can start having things like nanomaterial and I can start looking into um, deep deep space catalogues and that sort of thing and start working towards the next tier of science. But before I can do that I need to build up the tier 4 um, bioscience because that's the one I have the one science pack I haven't done yet on the in the um, in the space sciences. I've only got up to tier 3 down here. And that's going to be let's, let's, let's have a quick look. Yeah, so it doesn't seem too bad. Most of this is stuff that we've already got knocking around to an extent, like the different biological samples, the different bio, uh, vitamelange acids and elixirs and sulfur. Um, sulfur, I think we've got uranium. We've already got up here, not in not in the um, the actual biologicals area, but in general we do have uranium. I think. Oh no, I take it back. We do have uranium up here. So yeah, that that's that's already here. Um, bio sample. The the, the neural gel or the advanced neural gel actually rather is something that's going to need to be produced and we're going to need to bring in the blue circuits for this but that's not too difficult um, I think that is yeah definitely well within my capabilities I shouldn't have too much trouble with that the only slightly awkward bit of this at the moment is what comes after that so in order to make these into the bioscience pack 4 I need to get some co some vitamelange core fragments and vitalic epoxy vitalic epoxy is no problem that's just made from stuff I already have but these core fragments are going to need to be brought up from um, from Tulip on their own, essentially, um, as a as a thing. They're going, I'm going to need another. I'm going to need to bring bring them up as, as a supply of things because at the moment I'm only bringing up Vitamelange from there. But this is an extra thing to throw a, a spanner into the works. I've also talked quite a lot in the past about making some of the things like the Vitalic epoxy, the Vitalic reagent, the Vitalic acid, making all of those on uh, Miokin as well and shipping them all up separately. And I think that's potentially a good idea. Um, it means I'll be able to bring more. If I'll be able to bring all of these things up in a, in slightly more in a slightly more organised fashion. Um, I'll be able to. The, it means I'll be able to make them in bulk on a planet where I've got um, where I can use the um, productivity modules and where I don't need to worry quite so much about throughput. So I think that is quite a good idea. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while. So I think that might be my next plan as part of working towards having the, uh, the the fourth science pack here. There's still some tidying up I want to do, but that can always wait. There's always there's always, tidying up can always be procrastinated. <laughs> so yeah, it's been going quite well. I've um, I've got another science pack on the go. I've got my uh, spaceships here going off to another. Uh, another outpost so that's working quite nicely the spaceships are trickling around the solar system fairly merrily I and mean, if we look at here we've got this core mining spaceship has just left miokin so there's enough enough core fragments have been dug up from there we've got um that is the only one that's actually in flight at the moment huh. okay but there are lots of other spaceships that are traveling around as and when they're required on norvis we've got the um core mining going on still or core processing sorry going on still 
here. Um, as you can see, we've got enough of it here. It looks like a spaceship must have left relatively recently, I suspect, given how... Or perhaps we've just got a bit of a backlog of something. No, these are all flowing merrily. So, yeah, this is this is the state I want this system to be in, where it's um, it's churning through all of the all of the core, uh, core fragments and producing the outputs as fast as possible. The um, the, st the some of these belts are pretty full, like that, but I think this is this is how I want it. To, this is how I want the uh, core processing to run. Basically flat out. Hopefully this is now this is going to be enough to be producing all of the materials that I'm going to need on Norvis. Um, let's have a quick look at these stations. So we've got 15,000 in that one. We've got 19,000 in that one. We've got 16 in that one. 35. Okay, there's plenty of stone. 18, 19. So for any of these, if it says less than 20,000, then it means it's got less than a train load. It's quite, and I'm not producing it fast enough. If it says more than 20,000, like it does for the stone, then I am producing it fast enough and there isn't there isn't a worry there. And that is probably because of all of the stone that's being brought up with the, uh, the core mining uh, ships. So there's a lot of it flowing out from there and there's quite a lot of it being made here in the actual core mining process, uh, core fragment processing. So we do have a lot of stone available, um, but we don't seem to be getting a, a backlog of it, at least not yet. <laughs> I might, I am thinking I need to upgrade these to warehouses just to get a bit more space available in my uh, in 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 the uh, in the system here but we'll see we'll see how that goes so yes in general i think it's going pretty well um actually these are very very full that's the yeah, okay i need to, i need to make this bigger <laughs> um but things are generally going quite well i'm uh, pretty happy with this uh and so i think for next time the ne uh, next things are going to be getting the uh, the biological sciences up and running but there's a few yaks to shave on the way through to there so, as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to come along to the uh, the streams on a Tuesday evening. That uh, kicks off at 7.30 UK time, and I'll play until I start to fall asleep, uh, which is usually about 11.30. Um, it's meant to be a little bit earlier than that, but it tends to be about 11.30. Oh, yes, we are getting through the stone pretty quickly. Uh, we have Industrial Factorio Industrial Revolution on Thursdays. That's with a gr uh, group of my friends, and we're doing pretty well there. Uh, we've just about got artillery r uh, running up, up and running now, and, but we're and, um, and so we're, we're uh, playing with that, and also trying to scrabble for enough resources to keep everything up and running. So, yeah, it's it's certainly going, <laughs> whether it's going well or not. Oh yes, and we're starting to build up a new mall system, but we're based around logistics bots, which isn't something I normally do, but we thought we'd tr try something a bit different. There's the uh, GTA videos coming out a couple of times a week as well. Those are always good fun, and I uh, yeah, can't rec recommend them strongly enough. And I'm doing occasional other videos as well. I uh, I released one last Saturday about how uh, how I've just sold my uh, my uh, cut my RX8 and how sad I am to see it go. So it's I got very emotional making that video. So um, I, yeah, it's it's I think it's a good one. I'd, I'd recommend watching that. So, this has been Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and comment and so on and so forth. All those sort of things that you're supposed to do to uh, to please the, uh, ve the um, voracious YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.